What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got NFL wire sewer primes everyone took for granted. Let's check this In out. The modern day NFL, the standard of talent at Leo. wide receiver is so great that almost Larry every Fitz. team has somebody you would consider a lead. I mean, sometimes Facts, we truly Megatron. don't even appreciate their greatness until they are gone. But what about the guys that were so much more? Bro, AB's fall off was crazy, bro. Like, I feel like if he wanted to have CTE, he probably would have still been playing in an um NFL talking game. About the receivers I ain't gonna lie. Two decades who, despite their because let's 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 keep it a buck. He he has CTE for their all time status by their contemporaries. Like, I mean, think about it. We all love Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb, but is anyone compared to to Prime Larry Fitzgerald or Megatron? And simply put, the answer is no. But when it comes to some of these all-time receivers and their legacy upon reflection, their greatness was so understated until it was too little too late. These Facts. are wide receiver primes that we all took for granted. Man. Now, up first, we have to start with a guy who's prime that lasted Leo. longer than most receivers' time as a starter, spanning six seasons beginning in 2014. After a okay. dominant career at Alabama, Julio Jones was drafted six overall by the Atlanta Falcons in 2011, and there wasn't really any doubt that he would be, at the very least, solid. But Jones hit the gas as soon as he turned pro, nearly cracking 1,000 yards in his rookie season despite only playing in 13 games. In his second year, he did break 1,000 yards, just shy of 1,200, with 10 touchdowns in his first Pro Bowl appearance. Damn. And when he did come back from a broken foot that cost him the entire 2013 season, pretty much, it was straight up off to the races. And I completely mean that literally because what he did was absolutely insane. Jones didn't have less than 1,400 yards until 2019 with his Damn. elite size and 4-4 speed combining with elite route running ability. I just like, bro, I just wish Julio could have got himself a ring, bro. Like, Atlanta was so close to getting a ring. Um, Was it 20? 16 I believe um against the against the Patriots but bro these niggas really allowed Tom Brady and the Patriots to come back from 28-3 Matt Ryan was like that shit is crazy scariest and I feel like we all, all took Matt Ryan for granted too because Matt Ryan was really good for Atlanta oh and by best the, way, the best quarterback they ever had by he far still had 1,394 yards and six touchdowns in this six-year span Julio Jones was a pro bowler every single season made two first team all pros and three second teams his okay. defining season though came in 2015 he started the the year with a nine catch 141 yard game against the philadelphia eagles Damn. and he had two touchdowns and gashed philly with his acceleration and toughness averaging more than 15 yards per catch with a long of 44. I mean, damn near every time he touched the ball, he just absolutely dominated. Jones proceeded to carry this week one momentum all the way to the end of the season, amassing 1,871 yards and eight touchdowns, averaging damn. 116 yards. Give me that. Game. I mean, the dude was and like, so and his specialty too was like the toe tap on the sideline, like these type of catches right here. Not that, not that. This right here, these type of catches, bro. He like he made those shits like his, his um go to right there. I mean, the dude was so dominant. That he like was that was the best thing he was good at right there that and like the jump balls pause. offensive player of the year votes and don't worry because the other one that's on that list that also did receive votes is on this list who we all forgot about this season set okay. the julio standard and by the end of his prime he had sewn up a laundry list of records including the falcons career receiving yards record the nfl record for most 250 plus yard games at three and the most consecutive seasons with 1300 yards with six 1400 yards with Damn. five and 1500 yards with with two. Oh, and if that doesn't sound crazy enough, he was also the fastest player ever to amass 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13,000. Oh my gosh. Yeah, bro is definitely a future first battle Hall of Fame. I already knew that from the jump, but looking at this. Oh yeah, Which is gotta impressive, be. But makes a lot of sense gotta be, you bro. See his Falcons record of 58 regular season games with 100 plus yards. I mean, in the year of the Atlanta Super Bowl run two, Julio had one of only six 300 yard games in the history of the NFL. Damn. And he's gonna throw on first down to Julio Jones. Jones still on his feet. And I feel like, like as the as like the league gets more pass heavy, we probably might start seeing more 300 yard um passing games, not passing his receiving games, like. Shit is crazy now. Cause like Jamar Chase almost cracked that like I mean, a um about a week ago. A division title in an NFC championship. So I mean, obviously we know how that Super Bowl run did end, but Julio was hardly the problem, leading the Falcons with 87 receiving yards and four catches in the Super Bowl. And as crazy as it sounds too, I mean, if you look at
at the Falcons record while Julio was in his prime, you probably wouldn't even notice or at least realize that they had a unicorn of a wide receiver on their roster. Like, I mean, Julio Jones is pretty much, maybe you could argue Matt Ryan, but Julio was like the main reason why they remained so competitive. And I mean, Rocks. honestly, he would have continued to that do so. Matty Ice, the Julio connection was different. An injury halted him in 2020 before a Falcons team preparing for life without Matt Ryan traded him to the Tennessee Titans. In Wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you say? Baltimore talked to ATL before the draft, but went went out after taking wait what so we were about to get like see this is what i'm talking about with us bro we always try to go out and get big time receivers but never commit bro like oh my gosh been preparing for life without matt ryan traded him to the tennessee Titans. we really took bateman over getting julio limited that shit is julio diabolical I ain't gonna lie. passes for 434 yards officially signaling the end of his prime before stints with the bucks and eagles did lead to his retirement and i mean as crazy as it sounds too and kind of just because of how his career did end with the falcons and just i mean the falcons just kind of lackluster postseason success the new generation of wide receivers and i mean even just the new generation of kids i should say to really forget how dominant julio jones was yeah, like i feel so i feel young. like so what's what's the word i'm looking for i guess blessed to to be able to witness these players play you know what i'm saying like julio ab megatron you know what i'm saying aj green um who who, who else am i missing bro who else am i miss, missing let me see I, I like, bro. It, it like the list goes on, gang. I ain't gonna lie. Forged or basically made Matt Ryan into an MVP, and then on top of that, also practically took the Atlanta Falcons on his back to a Super Bowl. Like that's crazy. He led the NFL in receiving yards twice while playing in an era headlined by great receivers. Jones is for sure a lock for the Hall of Fame in 2028, as he was on the 2010s All Decade team, which was a final nod to just how incredible Julio Jones was at the very peak of his prime. Now up next we have. A guy who muddied his own out of all the pictures, huh? Who used to be one of the best wide receivers in the world. The Pittsburgh Steelers drafted an underscouted prospect from Central Michigan in the Bro, look weird round. with no hair As a Chippewa, Brown averaged over 1,000 yards per season while also boasting physical tools like a 4 4 8 40 time in a 33 inch vertical. Brown had many fewer injury concerns than most receivers while also being available, but had good hands and was willing to do whatever he had to to get playing time. And I mean, at the time, too, just Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had a very deep and just good wide receiver court, so it was kind of a struggle for Brown to find a role inside of this offense. But he did find it when he was added to the special teams unit as a rookie, returning a kickoff for 89 yards and a score in his first career game. Despite appearing in just nine games in his rookie year, AB only had 16 catches for a buck 67 and no scores. Damn. Through the next two seasons, Brown did improve, totaling more than 2,000 all-purpose yards, including his kick and punt returns in 2011. In 2013, though, stars like Hines Ward and Mike Wallace were gone now, which basically paved the way for AB to get a starting job. And I mean, the dude truly did emerge in week three of that season against the Chicago Bears. The game was a 23 to 40 loss, but not because Damn. Brown had played poorly. On nine catches, Brown went for 196 yards and two Holy touchdowns, shit. including a 45 that, and I, that, catch like that, that. That's how performance right there, bro. Like, it's got to be demoralizing. Like you put everything on the line for your team to win and they still lose like that that's how you got to feel for jamar chase and joe burrow like two games in a row against my ravens too in the field goal range for their first score of the day in a 33 yard catch for a score of his own from that point on in 2013 ab never had fewer than five catches per game the second in history to have five plus catches for an entire season and average 93.7 yards per game and i mean at this point too brown had basically established him as the steelers go-to guy and it was easy to see too because the chemistry between him and big ben was just so easy to see by the end of 2013 ab had broken the steelers record for single season yards making the pro bowl as both a wide receiver and a returner while also making the all Damn. pro second team for the rest of his prime okay was bro for five seasons, you ain't gotta shut him on him twerking game come on come on or 1200 <laughs> receiving yards averaging almost on, 12 bro. scores per year before factoring in his return capabilities unfortunately though it was about Thank four you. years into his i ain't trying to say a grown-ass man to become erratic and have some weird behaviors his behavior such as live streaming a private locker room moment and ignoring nfl conduct policies began to overshadow his greatness as even though he was being fined tens yeah, of thousands bro, like, of dollars in 20 this, this is one thing too that i've learned you know what i'm saying growing up and shit bro like if you're not coach you like you can have all the talent in the world bro but if you're not coachable what good is that talent 
You know what I'm saying? I would rather have a receiver that's coachable over over a nigga that 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 has talent but is not coachable any day of the week, bro. Team like real shit. One of the best wide real receivers shit. in football for three more seasons. By the time the Steelers were done with him, AB had been to six straight Pro Bowls and made five consecutive All Pro teams, being voted first team for the Final Four. Like I mean, that's a just gone. truly monumental run he had. He also finished top three in Offensive Player of the Year voting three times, never finishing behind another receiver. And after being traded away, Antonio Brown pretty much failed to work with any else that wasn't named Tom Brady and proceeded to burn about three other got his ring three other teams that he did try to go play on he finally did get his ring when he was on the Bucks but by then his prime was very far behind him since walking away from the game Brown's erratic behavior has worsened and everything he's done since only signals to more and more reasons to say that we took his prime for granted that shit I mean, is as crazy, much of a joke bro. as it is it is truly just kind of sad to see that Brown has fallen so far especially since he had been so ridiculously dominant for that stretch Damn. Like, like, you may call me crazy, but at one point, AB was in the conversation for basically being as good as Randy Moss or Jerry Rice. Like, the dude's career was absolutely insane when he was playing. Like, I mean, his physical tools were that good, and based on how much remaining talent he flashed in a Super Bowl run with the Bucks, he had a lot left in the tank during the years he wasted with the Raiders in that one game he played for the Patriots. Unfortunately, as we all know, he has pretty much kind of descended more into a meme and obviously just all the crazy stuff he does say on Twitter. But that's kind of sad that we're going to remember him for really all of be his, on Twitter, all of his off the field stuff rather than how good he was in his prime on the field. Now, when you think of unprecedented high Larry difficulty Fitz. catches, you might just think of our next receiver, though. Yes, Larry Fitz, the only receiver on this list to spend his entire career on one team, was the third overall pick of the that's loyalty, bro. Draft, going to the Arizona Cardinals after their foreign it's hard, it's hard to find that in receivers nowadays i ain't gonna lie to you prospect after just i feel like like the only only receiver now that like really showing true loyalty to his team for a long time has got to be like mike evans right like, like that's the only that's the only receiver i can think of right now that is still on the same team university of pittsburgh and had his number retired as a panther and i mean of all the receivers that we are going to talk about today fitzgerald not only had probably the longest prime of these players on the list but his prime basically started as soon as he stepped onto an nfl field he was the youngest player in nfl history to have a two receiving touchdown game and finish his rookie year Wait, with real? 780 yards more than exciting for a rookie in a heavy run scheme for the next 13 seasons though despite playing with 14 different starting quarterbacks through said stretch. 14? One of the most consistent and productive players in the league, both for the time and in context of history. Larry Fitzgerald doesn't always get great separation from defensive backs, plays fast enough, but lacks sprinter speed. <laughs> but lacks sprinter speed. <laughs> and then show this play right here, bro. Hey, I don't give a fuck, bro. In-game speed and 40 times speed is just completely different, gang. I ain't gonna lie to you. You can like you can have a slow ass 40 time, but like if you fast in game, that's all that really matters for real. Earned his name for making big time catches in the biggest of moments, most importantly leading the charge on the 2008 run to the Super Bowl. I mean, this Cardinals team was relatively weak at defense, but Fitzgerald scored in every single game of the playoffs including three touchdown receptions in the NFC Championship game to overwhelm the Eagles and a pair of fourth quarter touchdowns to put Arizona on top until the immaculate reception by Santoni yeah, that's, that was tough. back the game for Pittsburgh. Like that playoff run featured Larry Fitzgerald breaking the NFL record for most receiving yards and touchdowns in a single postseason. Playoff greatness did become the norm for Fitzgerald who in nine career playoff games averaged more than 100 yards in a touchdown per game. But even Damn. when the Cardinals no longer had Kurt Warner under center, Larry Fitzgerald continued to be incredibly productive, taking a small dip in 2012 before returning to peak form in 2015, posting three straight 1,000. Like, and didn't he? Like, like, I think he retired kind of, kind of early too, bro. Because I feel like he retired on what, like, it was 2019, 2020, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I'm saying? I felt like he was going to come back for like at least one more season, but never have. He finally did start to fall off a little bit in 2018, right before they did get Kyler Murray, but he still did manage to stay around for a little bit to help Kyler Murray to just develop into the quarterback he is today. Playoff success and sustained greatness That's are the two wobbly ass pass with no player outside of the GOAT conversation coming close to matching him. 
But now our next wide receiver that we're going to discuss is just kind of stepping outside of that traditional box of just what you might think a prototypical wide receiver would look like, who without a doubt is just the best ever at this one single thing, as opposed to guys like Larry Fitzgerald and Julio Jones, who could do it all pretty much. Deshaun Jackson is oh, Deshaun. Oh, okay, the okay, best okay. threat receiver of all time. Deshaun and Jackson. Really close, and I'm not even going to sit here and try to entertain the Randy Moss stuff because, again, he was an all-around guy. Jackson was just just a deep threat. Jackson Facts. entered the league through the second round of the 2008 draft being taken by the Eagles. And like a couple other guys on this list, Deshaun Jackson wasted no time in making his mark on the league, showcasing insane explosiveness and elusiveness in a rookie season which saw him catch 62 passes for 912 yards. What is so interesting about Jackson though, however, is the frame that he did enter the league with. If you look back on this list, everybody is going to be more prototypical around that 200 body weight to like six foot plus range, where Jackson was more of the opposite. He was about five foot ten and weighed just about 175 pounds at full playing weight. The trade-off for the limited size was speed that the NFL had never seen before. Jackson ran a 4-3-5-40 before being drafted Damn. and really only fell down boards because of his smaller size. But I mean, the Eagles took a chance, and in doing so, that's why you always got to take a chance on receivers like that. Bro. Like without prime Deshaun Jackson, there wouldn't be a Xavier Worthy, wouldn't be a Jalen Waddle, or hell, even a Jamison Williams. Or Tyreek Hill. wouldn't be as valuable as they are today. Like those guys, though, Jackson's career was kind of marred by injuries due to his size and just playing so small. Despite all of this, though, he still managed to have five 1,000 plus yard seasons through the time with two different teams. I mean, with his speed and ability to get down the field, he was always available for a big play and led the league in yards per reception four separate times, peaking at 22 and a half yards. Additionally, on top of this, too, he was AB before AB becoming the first player in history to earn Pro Bowl honors at two positions in the same season, that being kick returner and receiver. Not, so, not that, surprised at all, bro. Explosiveness <laughs> almost always led to points for his team. He holds the NFL record for most career touchdowns of 60 plus yards with 26 and is tied for the Damn, most 26 yard touchdowns at five. Not only that, but Deshaun was a part of multiple massive moments for his teams. Most this is iconic right here. At the new Meadowlands. Yeah, this is iconic right here, bro. Jackson bobbles it and now has to try and recover. Didn't the punter lose his job because of this too? Damn, what a block. Are you kidding? Deshaun. Still not in and it's like bro <laughs> They could always troll him. That play meant history again for Deshaun, who owns the first and only occasion in NFL history that a punt was returned for a walk-off touchdown. And yes, the back half of Jackson's prime was overshadowed. Wait. History again for Deshaun. For the touchdown, no what do you say? Flags. That play meant history again for Deshaun, who owns the first and only occasion in NFL history that a punt was returned for a walk-off touchdown. Cap, Xavier Gibson did it last year. And, and Tylen Wallace did it last year, too. Wait, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Unless I'm missing something, I'm pretty sure that's, that's not the only time that's happened. And yes, the back half of Jackson's prime was uh -huh. overshadowed by messy contract negotiations and a few trades, but the man was always dominant while redefining what a receiver could be. Now, to wrap up the video, though, we have to talk about one of just the legends, one of the great Megatron. Legends, at the same time, we kind of took his prime for granted because more so of just the cards or the team that he was dealt to. And similar to Larry Fitzgerald, his prime pretty much lasted his entire career, meaning he went in on top and came out on top. Like, I mean, to simply put it, yes, you don't sir. have the nickname Megatron. Bro, imagine, bro, imagine Prime Megatron on, on this year's Detroit Lions team. Bro, oh my gosh. That, bro, that would be a disgust. Like, their offense is already disgusting, but, bro, adding that. All time great. He was one of the best players yeah. in the league. At this is go ahead and get on the, the Lombardi, bro. <laughs> being one of the most heavily covered players in history. This wasn't simply because he was good, but because he was truly unguardable in man coverage. Johnson was six. Shit, even in double and triple coverage, he was uncoverable. Pure dominance on the field while still posting a 4 3 5 40 yard dash in unparalleled. 
Huh? Dominance on the field while still posting a 4 3 5 40 oh yard dash. Gosh. Unprecedented combination at the time. I knew it was Maybe fast, but I didn't know he ran a 4 3. Damn. With his awards. Obviously, he's the only member on this list who's already in the Hall of Fame due to his early retirement, but he made the top 10 single season receiving yards list twice and has the most consecutive. It's sad that he retired early, though. In history with eight. In just 135 career games, Megatron racked up over 11 and a half thousand receiving yards and 80 three touchdowns he was a six-time pro bowler and a three-time first team all pro all this while playing for the woeful lions and that's honestly why johnson's prime is underappreciated because he Facts. might actually be the greatest of all time at his position if he had been with a franchise who knew how to win i mean hell two of his final three seasons were hampered Damn. by injury and he still crossed a thousand yards in both of them even in a season when matthew stafford was sidelined by injury johnson managed to amass 1300 yards and 12 touchdowns with Dan Orvlosky under center. That's crazy. Just overcoming all of this adversity. The nigga who ran out the back of the end zone, bro. To get the full picture, that's the only thing I remember him for. In history, we have to go back to 2013 when the Lions faced the Dallas Cowboys. In that October game, oh, go back, go back, go back. When the Lions faced the Dallas that, Cowboys. Bro, that, bro, that image looks crazy, yo. Game, Calvin Johnson, as good as earned himself a golden jacket with just 14 catches. Early in the game, Megatron connected with Stafford on an 87 yard bomb and the following touchdown and the air raid continued to rain down as johnson would finish the day with a handful of insane catches a touchdown reception and 329 receiving yards when all is said and done the only reasons megatron was taken for granted were that he played for the lions and that he retired in 2015 because he lost his love for the game he didn't want to play hurt yeah, anymore bro. but when you take a look at his tape and his numbers it's clear that calvin johnson wasn't just the best receiver of yeah his nothing player, else to prove for real for real the best ever and if you want to see all the ridiculous things that current players are saying about lamar jackson then click this video right here Hey, man, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know what other NFL videos y'all want me to react to. Without further ado, I'm out. Yeah!